Can you use the tone capture feature on the GE250 to capture the sound of your favorite plugin? Today we're going to find out. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I do all sorts of guitar related stuff like this on my channel. If that's something you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss any uploads. Recently, I posted a video on using the tone capture feature in the GE250, and one of the comments that really caught my attention was asking me if you could use it to capture the sound of a plugin. So what I wanted to do today is get this all set up and see if we can capture one of my all-time favorite guitar plugins, the Fortin Nameless. And um, I'm probably gonna need a guitar to do that. Let's do the software stuffs. Gonna open the Moore Studio for the GE250. So the way I have the signal chain up is I have the send and the return right in front of the amp blocks. And I'm using one of the cabinets that's built into the GE250. Actually, let's see what cabinet I'm using. I'm using the Kali 4x12 dash one. It is on the 421 mic. The tubes are off because I don't want to be emulating tubes on top of something that's already emulating tubes that I'm trying to capture. Way too many tube emulations going on there. So I have the send in front of the amp block and the return behind the amp block and the amp block is off right now. Now on my PC I have the Fortin plugin loaded up here and I've dialed it into my preferences. I also have the cabinet section off which you can do by right clicking on it and I'm going to want to turn the cabinet section off because I'm going to use the cabs that are built into the GE250 for this demonstration. And in the audio setup, I set my output channels to lines three and four versus the left and right monitor outputs. And line one is still my input. So this is more or less set up the same way the four cable method would be set up. I have my guitar running into the input of the GE250, the effects send from the GE250 going into input one on my Apollo Twin Duo. And then I have output number three going to the return on my GE250, and then the output of the GE250 going into input number three. So I have the effects loop on on the GE250, as well as the cabinet emulation. The amp is off, and this is the sound that we're getting from the plugin running through the cabinet on the GE250. So now I'm going to go into the tone capture option on the GE250. We're going to select a new block and now it's bringing up the dialogue. I'm using the internal cab on the GE250 and I more or less have a serial loop set up, although there's no real effects loop. So I'm kind of making one. Okay. We're going to hit next. Just the amplifier to the desired tone did that next. Um, okay, now what you need to do is you need to select an amp that sounds most like the amp that you're trying to capture, which is going to be pretty difficult because I think the nameless sounds pretty unique, but... Um, that US Gold might be kind of close. Um, the other one that I was thinking sounds kind of similar is the Hugen Distorted. And I'm trying to just match these, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of how I have it set up on the amp. It doesn't have to be exact, but I figure the closer it is, probably the better it is. We're just going to put the master at about 50. Okay, we're going to hit next. Now it's asking me to choose an empty slot. So we'll choose slot number six. And I'm going to press C here to start the capture. And I don't actually know if you have to play while it's doing this, but... Done. Right now I have the effects loop on. This is the nameless plugin going through the cab on the G250. Let's turn the effects loop off and turn the tone capture on, number six. And we also have to turn the amp block on as well. Mm -hmm. 
So here's the only issue that I can find tone capturing a plugin is that you get this weird sort of like compression. <laughs> And I'm not really sure what that's about. So let's go back over to the plugin. And we're gonna try and do a tone capture again. And this time I'm going to change the settings a little bit and maybe even change the source amp. As cool as this is, I kind of want to capture the sound with the grind pedal. So we'll turn the grind pedal on and then I'm gonna leave the other settings the same. We'll go back over here to the GE250 software. And this time we'll do tone capture. Uh, we're gonna choose number seven. Sync is off, tone capture, internal cab. Yes, 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 we already know this. This time let's go with a Let's go with that US Gold 100. This time we're gonna turn the master down quite a bit. Let's turn it down to like 25. And start the capture process. Here's the Fortin plugin. And here's the tone we just captured. Let's go back to the Fortin plugin. Tone capture. Okay, so there you have it. So there's a few takeaways from this. It's not capturing the tone exactly, and that could just be because I'm not choosing an amp that's close enough to the tone that's coming out of the Fortin plugin. It could just be that I have this hooked up to a plugin and not a real amp, and it's not really designed to do that. I'm not really sure. The other takeaway is that the master setting is very, very sensitive when you're capturing a plugin this way or at least that's what's happening with me. Like you guys saw when I have the master turned up more, it creates more of this weird like compression effect, um, especially when you're hitting low notes. But it can be done if you have those plugins that just have super unique tones that you really love and you wanna capture them and be able to use them live without dragging your computer around, you can do it. All right guys, what do you think? Did the GE250 come pretty close? Is it usable? Let me know in the comments below. To be honest with you, I'm pretty excited about this. Even though it didn't capture the tone exactly, I still think it's really cool that it's able to capture the tone of a plugin at all. And I definitely see myself doing a lot more tweaking and tone questing with this to be able to try and dial in that plugin perfectly because like I said, this is one of my all time favorite guitar sounds. And if I can capture it on the GE250, and replicate it and use it in kind of any scenario I want, that'd be a pretty cool feature. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me. If you like this video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.